Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. The devil don't have no room in my mind, my heart, my spirit, my home, my car, my phone. Amen. He's not welcome anywhere. Amen. What I want to talk to you about tonight is unintended. Everybody say unintended. unintended. Invitations. Invitations. Unintended invitations. God wants to talk to us here tonight. Jesus, it's your word, so it's already anointed. I pray that you would anoint once again our ears and our hearts that we may hear and learn and understand, God. Speak to us tonight. I preach to myself tonight, God, before I preach to anybody else here. And I thank you for your word. And the church said, in Jesus' name, you can be seated. Thank you for standing in honor of the word of the Lord. Amen. If we can go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. Amen. I'll be using this scripture quite a bit, Sister Jennifer. The Bible says, wherefore, putting away lying. Everybody say lying. lying. Now, if we look at the definition of lying, it just means the telling of lies or false statements, untruthfulness. Telling or containing lies deliberately untruthful, deceitful, or false. And I basically just described the devil to you. Amen. But it says, wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth. Everybody say truth. truth. Now, lying and truth are two things that I'm going to focus on a little bit tonight because they both point to a different God. Lying points to the devil that is a little God, and truth points to the supreme God, which is Jesus Christ. And you understand that these two dimensions, they're dimensions, and what you do shows your allegiance to the God. If you tell the truth and you live truthful, it shows your allegiance to Jesus Christ. If you lie, it shows your allegiance to the devil. And I know nobody here intentionally does it. But that's why it's called unintended invitations. Amen. And God wants to let us know maybe sometimes that we give the devil permission to attack our life and our marriage and our children without even realizing it. And that's a good God because he wants us to know. Amen. So in John chapter 8, let's look at why the devil, why lying is... If you lie, you give allegiance to the devil. Let's look at this, because in John chapter 8, verse 44, I'm going to read the whole verse, but I'm going to focus on the end. It says, ye are, this is Jesus talking, ye are of your father, the devil. He's talking to people, okay? Your father, the devil. Now look, how can I have a heavenly father, Jesus, right? I can have another father. I can be a child of the devil, okay? So he said, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do, because whoever you submit allegiance to, you will take on their nature. Okay? And he was also, he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth. That's the devil he's talking about. Because there is no truth in him. This is the part I want to focus on. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. I've heard Bishop say this and Sister Kai. He's a liar and he's the father of every lie. And that's true. He is. But how can a lie give the devil invitation to my life? If we look at the English Standard Version, which gives us a different translation of the end part of that verse 44, where it says he speaketh of his own. It says he speaks out of his own character. So when the devil, there's no truth in him and he's a lie. That's his character. So when I tell a lie, I am taking on the character of Satan. Right. It's very important that we understand this. Because this is something that I have never realized until God started dealing with me this a couple weeks ago. And it's like, I can come to church Live for God, worship God, and tell a little bitty lie. And I just give the devil or Satan an invitation to come and sit at my table. It may have not been intended, because I'm a good person, 
But he relates to that. He understands. He's like sitting around. When he hears a lie, he's like, oh, okay, they want me to come over, type deal. Okay? So whenever I lie, he's the father of lies. So I submit allegiance to the father of lies, which is the devil. That's right. That's why it's okay if you say, I can't stand a liar. Because I can't stand a liar. You know? I, I, I want to say I want to love you and help help you get to heaven, and that is my intention. But when somebody picks up the nature of Satan, right. amen, right. sometimes it's hard to deal with them a little bit. That's why we need the nature of God in our life. That's why we need truth in our life. But regardless, big or small, you always need to strive to tell the truth because if you tell a lie... That gives the devil invitation to your life. Okay? Now, he's the father of it. So another way to look at it, and I've already told this, but I'm going to say it again. Another way to look at it is when I lie, I'm basically asking to be the son of Satan. Okay. Let's think about this for a second. Whenever I lie, I'm basically asking to be the son of Satan. If he is the father of all lies, then if I lie... I'm the son and he is the father and I will take on his nature. Now let's look at the nature of God. Titus 1 verse 2. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie. So there's no lies in God. Amen. There's no truth in Satan. There's no lies in God. You know why? Because they're separate gods. Amen. And so... God cannot lie, promised before the world began. So if God cannot lie, then lying puts me more in agreement with the devil than it does with God. Whenever I tell a lie, no matter what it is, for personal gain, because I don't want to get in trouble, this may be for a young person or a child here tonight. And, and look. I'm not saying that if you, we have all maybe been untruthful at times. That's why there's repentance. But God wants us to realize the magnitude of what you're doing in the spirit realm when you tell a lie. Yes. Amen. You, what you are doing is you are coming into alignment or agreement with the devil. Lying shows my submission to the devil and my rebuke of God. Amen. Lying shows my God. The Holy Ghost gave me all this before service. Lying shows my submission to the devil and my rebuke of God. Now let's look at what a lying spirit does. I believe it's a spirit. Yes. A lying spirit. First Kings chapter 22 verse 21. Now this is talking about Ahab and a story, but I'm going to plug these scriptures out and use it for what I want to use it for. Okay. And there came forth a spirit. Everybody say spirit. spirit. And stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. So we're going to look at the authority tonight of spirits. They can't force you to do anything. All right. They can't hold your arm behind your back. They can't force you to do anything. All they can do is persuade you. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So this is the battle that we have. A persuading spirit. And it may not be a lying spirit. It may be something else. Anything that the enemy can get you to do in disobedience, what is he trying to do? He's trying to get a seat at your table. He wants a place in your life. Yes, sir. Yes. And so he will tempt you, persuade you, try to convince you with sin, regardless of the magnitude, just because he wants an open door into your life. Amen. Amen. And uh, I take this very seriously at times and all the time. And. I'm not talking about little things that we're joking, okay? I, you, you joke with somebody, you tell them a little lie, and you're like, yeah, I'm just kidding, that's not true. You're not having a good time. I'm not talking about that, okay? But there was a, uh, I've always said I could only work for Neil Slayton. He was the owner of our dealership because I knew that I wouldn't get fired for telling the truth. 
Okay? Because a lot of these big dealerships, for finance managers to keep their job, they have to lie. You have to lie. You're good. Because if you're really being truthful on the applications and everything, like for instance, there would be a person come in, they got like a super good credit score, but they only make $1,500 a month. In bigger stores, they would change that $1,500 to $10,500 a month. Nobody would know. And the deal would instantly be approved. But if they left it at $1,500 a month, regardless of what their credit score was, they wouldn't get approved because a bank would only give them like a $200 payment. They may be looking at a $50,000 car. So, Brother Vincent, they would lie. And then they would also lie to banks. So, if I, if I have really good, if I, have, if I didn't have good credit and Sister Kai had good credit, she comes in and buys a car in her name. But lets me drive it. That's called a straw purchase. And I have to sign an agreement with banks saying that I will not allow that to happen. That can't be my car. And I've always told people, say, look, I'm thankful for what y'all pay me here, but I ain't going to hell over this. That's right. That's right. Okay? And I told them. And one time we were sitting in the back, Brother Jacob, and this guy, these two guys come in and sat down. And uh, I was about to start the paperwork. And I think I sent them through Wells Fargo. See, what would happen is... Is that if the person that got the car, the car was in somebody else's name, right? But they bought it for somebody else. If they quit paying on the car and they found out it came back on me, and they could sue me as the finance manager. And the bank would cut its relationship off with us. And we ain't going to lie to do business up over a lie. And I was sitting back there and I had two gentlemen and it was like his friend. And I said... I was like, so why aren't you signing the papers? Because he, he's the one, he said, well, it's not my car. I'm just buying it for him. The only problem with that is that I was fixing out the lot of the bank. And I, I'm like, this job is not worth me going to hell over. And I want to tell you something. There's nothing in this life that telling a lie is worth eternity over. I don't care if it's a billion dollars. A billion. That's a lot. If getting a billion causes you to submit your allegiance to the devil versus God, it's not worth it. Right. And so I got up, I went to my, uh, my manager's desk, and I said, hey, I'm not doing this deal. When you say that, the salesman's mad because he ain't going to make no money. The whole store is mad, and they're all going to hate me. And they did. Because, I, listen, when you step out and tell the truth, there's going to be devils rise up that start hating you. That's right. Why? Because they live off of untruthfulness. Once you take tr untruthfulness from them, then it exposes them and they don't like it. I'm talking about lying spirits. Yes, sir. Come on, Pastor. Come Amen. On. And I said, I'm not doing this deal. And I told him the situation. He said, I don't expect you to. Okay, good. Let somebody else do it and go to hell for it. But not me. <laughs> Come on, yes. And when I told the man, I said, sir, I'm stopping this deal because it's illegal what you're doing. He went. Yeah, you're not getting the car. I'm sorry. You know, but you know what? Sometimes truth makes it. It may. It, it, it can be uncomfortable, right? But lying, it can be persuasive, amen. But just try to tell the truth. I don't know why God is dealing with me about this tonight. Now let's look at Acts chapter five. Now I, I take this stance, okay? I say don't lie to nobody. That's what I'm saying as the pastor. All right. But if you are gonna lie. Don't lie to God. That's right. Okay? Pick your battles. If you're in straits, the last person you want to lie to is God. That's right. Acts chapter 5. Let's look at it. But a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira and his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it. And brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. They sold some land for like a hundred grand. They're supposed to give the hundred grand, but they say, you know what? I want to keep fifty, and I'm just going to give the apostles fifty and lay it at their feet. And Peter said, Ananias, why have and I'm talking about don't give place to the devil, right? I'm talking about you are nothing. Me and you are nothing. We are only as good as what spirit we allow to control us. All right, all right. All right that's good. So if you're not letting God control you and I'm not letting God, there is some 
some spirit that is controlling us because they control all humans. And so look, why did Ananias do that? Because Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost. Satan had an entryway. He was persuaded. He got all the price of the land. And Satan said, don't give all that. Keep back part of it for yourself. And he did. And him and his wife came into agreement with it. And because of that, God killed both of them. Now, I'm not saying God's going to kill you. But I am saying that it is very, very important that you don't lie to God. Because he is true. And he's not going to put up with no lies. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. And so, this is the very, this is something that's really critical because if I don't stay full of Jesus, if I let myself get tempted, I don't stay full of the Holy Ghost, then I open myself up to spirits that have room because Satan can't fill a heart that's already full of Jesus. That's what Peter said. He said, why has Satan filled thine heart with what? Lies. Amen. Satan can't fill a heart that's already full of Jesus. Give no place to the devil. That's the scripture. If there is an available seat at your table, all the devil has to do is persuade you to lie. And that lie gives him permission to sit down and take a seat. I'm done with lies now. Everybody say we're done with lies. Let's go to verse 26 of Ephesians chapter 4. I'm not going to be super long tonight. Give me just a little bit longer. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 says, Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. It's common to get angry. Raise your hand if you've ever gotten angry. Okay. It is not a sin to get angry. Anger is a human emotion. But I want to tell you how the devil works. He wants you to get angry. And then when you're super mad, he wants to tempt you to try to sin. That's why it says be angry and sin not. When you sin while you are angry, anger coupled with sin invites the devil in. And I didn't even mean to rhyme that. Come on. Anger coupled with sin invites the devil in unintentionally you ain't even thinking about the devil but if you let him persuade you while you're super mad super frustrated to sin then he just got a seat at your table and he's fixing to come in and try to take control of my life and your life because he comes after the ministry super hard because if he can get the ministry then he has access to y'all Similar like leadership. If the bad guys get the leadership, the country's toast. Amen. And so I'm preaching to myself tonight too. Look, I'm preaching to myself before I preach to any of y'all. Okay? Verse 28 of Ephesians 4. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give. Everybody say give. To him that needeth. Okay? Let him that stole steal no more. When I steal, I place myself in common relations with the devil. Why? Because he is a thief. And when I steal, I take on his nature. Understand, it all goes back to the God. Who's at the top? I know there's a lot of thieves in the world, but who's the head thief? Devil. The Satan. So whenever I take up that and I steal, regardless of what it is, I take on the nature of the devil. Now to cancel Satan's invite, it says, let him that steals steal no more. Let him that stole steal no more. To cancel Satan's invite into my life, I have to stop stealing and start what? No. Giving. Giving. Working, giving is a byproduct of working, but I'm focusing on the giving. To cancel his invite, and I'm not preaching about money tonight. You can add money and whatever. I'm talking about just giving, giving time, whatever. To stop, to cancel Satan's invite, I have to stop stealing and start giving. Why? Stealing is the nature of the devil, and giving is the nature of God. 
It's about the natures that I pick up. That's why the Bible says it's better to give than to receive. Y'all thought that was about money. No, it's about nature. Because when I take up the nature of God, I also get the power of God. If I don't have the nature of God, when the world looks at me, they don't see. They don't see God. When I'm lying, when the world looks at me, they see the devil. We have to understand what we portray. That's why the enemy wants us to pick up these things because they want people looking for help to see him. They're still in competition with one another. The devil is still fighting. He knows his time is short. So stealing is the nature of the devil. Giving is the nature of God. And I'm, I can't stand a liar or a thief, and I'm sorry. Well, I had a cousin one time. Amen. I don't know if he was a good cousin. And Bobby, if you're watching this, I love you, but you need to repent. Amen. <laughs> but I walked in my room one day. He would come over to my house after school. I lived within walking distance of the school. We didn't ride the school bus. We just walked. And we were bored of walking. We would ride the school bus today. Like, we're like, oh, we get to ride the school bus today, you know? And uh, we were excited to ride the school bus back when I was in middle school. Brother James, he walked in my room one day, and I had a, a horse head that could hold like pins and stuff, and I had it full of quarters. Well, for some reason, I just walked over there, and my quarters were kind of messed up. And I knew that Bobby had been in my room after school, and he'd already went back to school. And oftentimes, he would come change or whatever. He lived with me for a little while. I loved him like a brother. But I asked him, I said, Bobby, did you take some of my quarters? He said, yes. Well, look, I still love Bobby, but I'm just saying that affected how much I could trust him. Because if you're willing to steal something small, right. Yes. Right. Right. think about it. Before you steal from God in any area, whether it be money or time or whatever, whatever the amount is that you're willing to keep back, is it worth picking up the nature of Satan? Is it worth inviting into your house with your children there? It's not worth it. I'm saying whatever the amount is, give it. Because I would rather invite. You see, when I'm living in truth, you know who I invite home with me? Jesus Christ. And when I'm not living in truth, you know who I invite home with me? The devil. And I care too much about my family and my children and my lost loved ones than to, buy, than to invite a spirit that will cause further grief and further corruption in my life and theirs. Jesus told us the nature of the devil in John chapter 10, verse 10. Let's look at it. He calls him the thief. So when I steal, I take on the nature of Satan. The thief cometh not but to what? day. He's a thief. He's going to steal, then he's going to kill, and he's going to destroy. That's his nature. That's all he has come to do. So if I replicate anything that of his nature, then I pick up his nature. What is the nature of God? Giving. John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he because of his love. That's his nature. That's the first thing that jumps out on planet earth when God loves us is giving. Amen. So when I'm giving, it's very important because this is a giving church and I'm very appreciative of it. But the beautiful thing about giving is not the dollar amount. It's that I'm putting on the nature of Jesus Christ in my life. That's the most beautiful thing about it. Now, James chapter 4 verse 7. Let's look at this. I'm almost done. James chapter 4 verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Okay? Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee or run from you. Lying, sitting when I become angry, stealing, temporarily breaks my submission to God. Lying, Sin and stealing breaks my submission to God. It temporarily breaks it. It can be repaired through repentance. The only way I can resist the devil is to be fully submitted to God. That's the only way. Submit, 
Resist, the devil runs. Now, if sin breaks my submission, because for the enemy to come in, what has to be broken? The first part, the submission. Sin breaks that submission, and then instead of resisting, the devil gets an invitation. Instead of, you can't come, get out, I rebuke you, it's, hey, come on in, I got room for you. And then the devil comes in. I'm about to prove it to you. Luke chapter 22 verse 3. I'm about to prove what I said. Luke chapter 22 verse 3. Then entered Satan into who? Judas. Surnamed Iscariot. Being of the number of the twelve. Now this is the question that I have to ask you tonight. Why was Satan able to enter into Judas and not any of the rest of the disciples. Why? Well, we're about to find out. Let's go to John chapter 12 and verse 4. John chapter 12, verse 4. I'm enjoying this tonight, aren't you? Yes, yes. John chapter 12, verse 4. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Now, this is after Mary had anointed Jesus' feet, or she took the ointment and, and a very costly ointment, the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with odor and the ointment. Y'all understand? Jesus, uh, Mary anointed Jesus before his resurrection. And Judas was mad that she wasted that precious ointment. And so in verse 5, Judas says, Why was not the ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? So you have Mary anointing Jesus with precious ointment. And Judas, which was over the money bag, is mad that that ointment wasn't sold and given to the poor. Now let's look at verse 6. What's the only way that the devil can come in? You break submission through sin. That's lying, stealing, or sinning when you become angry. There's a whole host of others, but I'm just going to focus on those three tonight. Why was Satan able to enter into Judas? Why, was, why did Satan have permission to come into Judas? Verse 6 tells us. This he said, not that he cared for the poor. Judas said, let's sell the ointment and give to the poor. But this scripture said he didn't care for the poor. Why did he say that? But because he was a thief. The reason why Satan had permission to enter Judas is because... Judas took up Satan's nature. Close to God, close to the preaching, close to the miracles, but a little bit of stealing, a little bit of lying. And he took on the nature of Satan and he gave Satan the permission to enter him. Because he was a thief, he put on the nature which put him in agreement with the devil. Y'all, you got to listen to this right here. I'm fixing to blow your mind right quick. Because it blew mine. The Holy Ghost gave me this. That was not a pat on the back. You're a good preacher. The Holy Ghost blew my mind today. Yes. Come on, yes. Because we just like, oh, Judas betrayed Jesus. We don't understand the real reason in the spirit realm why he did it. When he took on the nature of Satan and he became a thief, who was he showing allegiance to? The devil. That's why he had to betray Jesus. Because you can't serve two masters. Does it make sense? I just felt the Holy Ghost right there. I don't care. You can come. You can get to word. But your true allegiance falls in line with the truth that's coming out of your mouth. And the opposition of feelings I don't want no part of any nature of the devil. If it's stealing, if it's lying, if it's sinning, get it out of my house, get it out of my life. Because if you don't get it out eventually, you will have to choose between one or the other. Yes, yes. Judas could have been there on the day of Pentecost. But the reason why he couldn't is because he took on the nature of Satan himself. And it brought him, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And it allowed him to be at the Last Supper. It allowed him to be at the miracles. But there was a crossroads that came up. And he said, that's it. Hey man, he's over here. Why don't you take him? It was 
was not a personal vendetta of Judas to betray Jesus. It was the fact that he gave his heart to Satan. And scripture says you can't serve two gods. And every scripture is true. And so he couldn't serve God and Satan. And he had to choose Satan. That's why he allowed Satan to come in. And what is the end result of Satan's nature? Death. Steal, kill, and destroy. And his last time you ever hear of him, he hung himself and he's dead. You know why? Because he submitted himself to the allegiance of the Prince of Death. Yes, yes. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I want to tell you something tonight. I'm preaching myself too. It may be just a little lie. But if it's submission to the devil, you better tell the truth. I don't care what it costs you. Amen. I'm telling you, it may be just a little sin. But if it means your submission to the devil, you better get it out. I don't care what it costs you. Yes, yes. Because eventually, you will have to choose. Wow. Amen. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. Submission means obedience. Everybody say obedience. obedience. To everything in this word. Why does God put a pastor in your life and a bishop? And we all have pastors. And your pastor is probably since long gone, Brother Kai. But you know why? It's to keep us in line with obedience. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm not here to be your friend. If the end result is your friend, I love you. I want to be your friend. But if I see you getting out of obedience, yes, sir. Yes. what is that? The bigger picture. You know what it is? It's your submission and allegiance transferring from one God to another. And God puts a pastor or a mentor or something. I've had them in my life to say, hey, get back in alignment with the right God. Get back in submission with the right God. You don't want to let the spirit in on your children. You don't want to let this devil sit at your table. Amen. We know how it ends up to ask Judas. But tonight, you can resubmit tonight. Let's stand all over the house. Let me tell you the beauty of this. When you resubmit to the right God, you know what happens? God walks in your house. You're going to be my devil tonight, Judy. Is that all right? He grabs that devil by the ear. I'm kidding. And he leads him out. When you submit to the right God, he comes and he gets him. And he says, all right, you got to go. Here's the door. Yes, amen. All it takes is submitting to the right God. Yes. But if you're not willing to submit to the right God, you know who's always going to be at the breakfast table and the supper table and the dinner table? The devil. But I want to tell you tonight, he's the God with the little G. But I know the God with the capital G. And his name is Jesus Christ. Tonight, God, we resubmit ourselves to you. God, I'm telling you, as the pastor of this church, in my life first, if there's any area of my life, God, that's not submitted to you, God, I resubmit it to you tonight. Amen. I pray, God, that we would fall back in alignment with you, God, and that we would allow that alignment to resist the enemy. And the Bible says that he will flee. But, God, I don't want the end result is for a betrayal of you because I only want to serve you, Master. I only want to be submitted to you, Master. And if there is anybody in the house tonight, or maybe that is watching online, that is struggling with submission in any area, I pray, God, God, that you would allow them to fix it. That you would allow them to get it right. Because we don't want any contrary spirit to come in on their family. To come in on their heart and their soul. I pray for mercy tonight, God. Not only for me, but for every person under the sound of my voice. That we would all resubmit our lives back to you. And to make sure that we're living in truth. And according to what you would want. And we give you all the praise and the honor for it tonight. Let's give him a good hand clap of praise one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. To come back into alignment with God, he said in Ephesians 4, he that stole, still no more. Just stop. 
I'm not telling you you have to be perfect. But the lady that was caught in adultery, he said, go and sin no more. Why did he say that? Because her shunning that showed her submission to God. And that's all it is. You can make up in your mind. You can repent and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm submitting once again to you. And try the best. I know it's hard. Look, I know it's hard. But try with everything in you not to give your allegiance to Satan. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because I don't want to be a devil worshiper. And a lot of times we associate devil worshipers with people that wear all black and gothic and all this other stuff. But sometimes we're worshiping the devil with things that we allow in our life and we don't even realize it. If I take on his nature, it is worship. Amen. Amen. I really hope this helps somebody tonight. It helped me. And look, this is not, this is an encouraging message, but it's an inf informative inf information. God's giving you insight on the spirit realm. That way, if it's just something a little bit, hey, one second. If you don't want to tell the truth, just say, I'm not answering it. You don't have to answer everybody. Like if there's a situation that's causing you to have to lie or, or put you in a comfortable or uncomfortable situation and you don't want to cause more problems, you can say, I'm not talking about, I'm leaving this. Right? That's not a sin. That's not a lie. You can remove yourself. That's better. If, if, if not starting up problem is going to be worse for you, just remove yourself and let God handle it. Amen? Thank you for coming tonight. Let's look forward to Sunday morning. Remember the men that's going March 19th conference pool. Please meet with me after church. I love you tonight. Thank you for coming. And let's remember the time change. Amen. Let's remember the time change. So we don't want nobody getting here two hours early for prayer. Amen. Thank you tonight. I love you tonight. We'll see you Sunday.